have most in in dunya rich or poor they have something in common that they love and that that thing that they love of two kinds one we have explained in previous sessions that there is something that I asked, I was in California, I asked people, there is something that we love. There were many people. And, and, we, and it is a common thing. All of us the same. And I asked them, what, you, what, what is that thing that is in common that we love? What do you think they said? One person said, I love, we love Allah. I said that by tongue. They said, we love Prophet also that by tongue. We love Quran also by tongue. We love Islam. They gave all description about really what they love. But I said, there is something that everyone needs it and loves it. The most. And what is this, Dr. Jamal? Money. <laughs> <laughs> There are homeless people, they don't have money. But they love, like, they, what they love is, is love. all of us, we have it in common. They love love. Might be someone who is handicapped, mentally sick, doesn't have love even to anything, to anyone. But there is some, even handicapped has something that he loves. You know, you, you need it daily. You love it because you want it daily. <laughs> food, food. Food, everyone loves food. You cannot, you cannot, whatever it is, you love food. Whatever you do. Even a child. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his food through his mother when Allah gives birth, when she gives birth by Allah's order to her shine, Allah sent food for that shine because that shine loves food, needs the food. So every one of us loves food. So what we love most in it is the problem. And what we love most is food, so in it is the biggest problem. And that's why Prophet Wasallam said that Al-Ma'idah to Baytul Da'a Ma'idah, stomach, is the house of sicknesses. Today people, as doctors, they say to their uh, patients, don't eat this, don't eat this. They put them on diet. Because they know stomach is the dangerous thing that for human life. But what you eat, if it is not something that it is acceptable, you might have sicknesses. So, Prophet وسلم, knew that, and that's why he said, Al Ma'idatu Baytudda. Stomach is the house of sicknesses. And that's why he ordered his Sahaba saying, We are a group of people that 
We don't eat until we get hungry. And when we eat, we, do, we don't eat until we are full. We eat little bit in order to keep the space in the stomach. Today we, are, we eat so much that little bit more we will vomit. You know, in all time, these uh, Scandinavian people in Europe today, the Vikings, you know the Vikings? They used to eat and put their fingers, or the Romans put their fingers and vomit. Today there are people like that. I am hearing that in the West. What you call them in the medical term? They have a term. Tahir? Huh? Anemic? Bulimia. 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 They eat and they want to vomit. They eat, they want to vomit. Because they are, they have this man. Addiction to eat and to vomit. So, Prophet وسلم, in order to, he knows the tricks of the evil, because this comes from the evil. He said, Jahidu anfusakum bil ju'i wal abash. Jahidu means make jihad, means struggle against your ego with hunger and thirst. Is that, this is something big. When Prophet وسلم, says that, he said, and this jihad is rewarded more than jihad against an aggression or to defend your country. That jihad against yourself is far more higher than jihad against aggressors. So he said the only way to be able to stop our selfishness and our ego, bad desires, is through hunger and thirst. Jahidu anfusakum bil ju'i wal atash. Struggle against yourself by hunger and thirst. That's why Ramadan came. Ramadan is you are struggling against your ego with hunger and thirst. Prophet Wasallam, who is the perfect one, was struggling, uh, that was wrapping the stone against his stomach for three days, not eating. And, of course, that's why Sahaba, with their hunger, they learned from Prophet, they were able, their ego was not controlling them, but they were controlling their egos. One time, uh, one of the biggest companions of Prophet وسلم, Abu Huraira, he came to the house of Prophet, and he saw Prophet sitting and praying. Praying, sitting, not standing. He was surprised he never saw Prophet praying, sitting. Came and asked him, Ya Rasulullah, today is strange, I am seeing you sitting and praying. And Prophet وسلم, said, um, Praying and sitting from hunger. I am so hungry that I cannot stand. I have no energy. That's Prophet وسلم, sitting and praying because he is not he did not eat for three days. He's hungry. Are we hungry for three days? Even for one hour, always we are grazing, sorry, we are snacking, huh? but I won't. You are grazing. <laughs> I'm grazing, you are grazing. He is snacking. He's half, he's half. I saw some food downstairs. Okay, go get it. <laughs> 
So, he was crying. Abu Huraira said, I'm crying. I told him to look at him. He said, why are you are crying? What he wants to say, in his heart and his mind, is that we are eating to the maximum as this our Prophet وسلم, who is Allah sending as messenger for humanity, he is the most perfect one. He is praying because he has no energy to stand up because he was not he did not eat for three days. And we the problem is that we are still complaining. We never say Alhamdulillah. We never say thank you, Ya Rabbi. So the problem is that there are many different principles, A, B, C, D, E, F principles, in our lives that we are heedless about them. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He put in our hearts Islam and guided us to do the five prayers. But that's not enough. It's not enough to do the five prayers or to fast Ramadan or do charity and do Hajj. That's okay that it is, but this is the base. We have to build it up. And how to build up? We have to look what we love most. So after food, what comes? We love most. In order, now if we struggle against food, against our ego by hunger and thirst, then we'll be able to achieve something, at least something, little bit. And that's why in seclusion, when when uh, he was, when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, prophets in general, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all of them, all of them, they entered into seclusion. And in seclusions, they only were eating little bit, little bit food. They don't have to eat too much food. So struggling, struggling against our ego is struggling against what we love most. Someone might say, I love my wife most. He's lying. <laughs> you love your wife most? Salim? Nothing. You are lying. <laughs> I love my wife most. I'm lying. Because Allah said in Holy Quran, you may be full of love in me. A'udhu Billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. يوم يفر المرء من أخيه وأمه وأبيه وصاحبته وبنيه لكل امرئ منهم يومئذ شأن يغنيه. Allah said, there is a day coming that everyone will run away from his father, his mother, his brother, his wife, and his children. So how you love your wife now? <laughs> Everyone wants to save himself in the day of judgment. He doesn't look behind. He doesn't care for his wife or his children. He wants to save himself or herself. So then what happens? That we that shouldn't say the truth. You are running there, you are running away. Who does not run away? and bring all the people under his shafaha. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu You see the difference? Sahaba, they will intercede. Awliyaullah, they will intercede. Allah will give them power. 
So second thing we love in our life is what? There is something we love in our lives. When you have, when you are working all day, get tired, where do you go? Go to your home to relax, to rest. Yeah. So, after food, what comes? Home. Where you find complete relaxation, unless most people relax in their homes, except those who are fighting with their family. But not everyone fight. So that's why your home is become like what? Is like your watan, your country, your nation. It is the place where you go back to it, where you consider this is where you can go and rest, no one there. You feel happiness. You sit. There you are remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, حب الأوطان من الإيمان Love of country is from faith. You love your country is you loving your faith, you know? It's from faith. Where is our country? We describe it as home. But how many years you are going to stay in that home? Ten years? Twenty years? Forty years? Sixty years? Seventy years? Eighty years? And after what will happen? Doctor? Ninety years? And after what will happen? You die. Means where is your real country? It's the grave. It's the first <coughs> home for you. That's why if the, if the grave is a paradise, you must be happy. If your grave is not paradise, then you are in problem. So our duty is to build back our grave. Today, today there are people who go and buy a grave. And how much they pay? How much, doctor? Depends what it is, you know. Okay, how much maximum? Israel is about $30,000. They'll bury you near the... Where the drifting people is resurrect first. You know, that's kind of a business. Will you resurrect first? <laughs> how is that? Inside an actor from second level is cheaper to a higher level. If it is actress, they have more money. So it depends. But really, I know some people that they have bought grave long time ago, like 20,000, might be 25 years ago, 20,000 a grave. Today is 150,000 a grave. Well, but 
what is the importance of buying a grave where it is going to be a difficulty for you? Might be that it's not paradise there, according to what you have done. You have to build up the grave. They build it for you from cement, blocks, everything to put you there. And uh, then might be they put you a chair instead of laying down, you get tired. <laughs> they leave you a chair there and a small bed. You can move from a chair to a bed, then to chair. Which is true. Which is true. Because when, as soon as everyone goes away, after they bury the dead deceased, first thing Allah <coughs> sent back his soul to his body. And as soon as he sent the soul to his body, that servant, Abd, that person, wants to stand up and he hit the stone that above him. And he says, according to hadith of Prophet Sallallahu oh, he now is in understand that he is in the grave. And then Ankar, when accused two angels, comes to ask him questions. Who is your Lord? Who is your Prophet? Who is your, who is, what is your religion? What is your book? So we have to build that. And how to build it? It's not building it from cement blocks, but we have to build it from piety and sincerity and generosity blocks. Blocks that relate to Akhirah. And what are these blocks that relate to Akhirah? And I'm not going to make it difficult. I'm going to make it very simple, very easy. Because Islam is easy. Islam is it's not difficult. It's to have a good intention. As Prophet said, Innamul A'malu bin Niyyat. Every amal, all amal, all, all actions according to the intention. If your intention is good, you find good. If your intention is bad, you find bad. So that is our country. That is our water, that is our homeland. That is our homeland. That we go to it. If our homeland become Rawdatum Riyadh al Jannah, as Allah described, a paradise from Allah's paradises, that we are saved. Or else we are not saved. Or else we will have problems. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. He said that, and I'm, I'm explaining from Grand Sheikh's notes. He said that al watan al-Hakiki huwa al The real homeland is the grave. Wa huwa adna al And it is, the, it is the lowest of the levels. It means the first level that you are building up. So the grave is the first level because this life is ending. So it's not everlasting, so it is not your homeland. As soon as you die, that is not anymore homeland. The homeland is the grave. And the grave is like people when you were, sorry for that expression, but you, when you were in Bangladesh, you had a home. You know? That home is not the, like the home you have here. So you have might be a very normal home according to your capacity or according to your uh, financial 
wells in order to put something. So you have a normal home. You begin to work, Allah gave you, you have a bigger home. And like that, you're changing from home to home until finally you are happy with one home and you make it very beautiful according to your taste. And you consider that home is your home then. Similarly, we have to build our homes in Akhira. One after one, the grave first is a simple home. But if you were in a good standing, Allah will make your grave a paradise. Allah will stretch it from east to west. Allah will make it as Prophet mentioned and Allah mentioned Rawdatum Riyadh Jannah, a paradise from, paradise from heaven. So he said this is the first level of homes that they are they go for on, in seven levels. The grave is the first level from seven levels. And what is the highest level? The highest level that you can reach and it, 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 it doesn't come in our mind until, unless we have to explain it. What we said when Allah created us in the day of promises, you know the day of promises. Day of Promises, when we were souls in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Allah created us, created our souls first. Then he asked us a question, which is in Holy Quran. <clears throat> Am I not your Lord? What we said? Yes. So what does that mean? When Allah says, Am I not your Lord? Doctor, think. Who heard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala words? No one. No one. Except two. When Prophet went into Mi'raj and reached a place where Jibreel was not able to go forward, only Prophet went forward. What Prophet heard there, there was no intermediary. It was directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? And who second heard? He said, Now Musa alayhi He was Kalimullah. Now we don't know. We cannot exchange. It is Allah's words, uh, voice, but we know it's Allah's words. <coughs> but what kind of <coughs> the way of revelation that came, we cannot understand it. So we leave it like that. It's only. Prophet knows and Sayyidina Musa knows. The one who is, was bringing the wahi to Prophet Sallallahu after, who was that? Jibreel alayhi salam. He was also hearing, but is, was hearing the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he was hearing the voice that we, can, we cannot explain, we, cannot, we don't know what, was, what kind of uh, we, we can say al hatifur rabbani means Allah's uh, like hatif in Arabic. Uh -huh. The hatif in Arabic is like telephone in English. Hatif means something that you a signal that comes to your to your ear. So only you are getting these signals. 
Prophet getting these words, signals, and Jibreel alayhi salam, and says, Ma Musa heard. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran that in the day of souls, when we were souls in His presence, He asked us, Alastu bi rabbikum, am I not your Lord? What kind of voice we heard? It's an honor. It was an honor for human beings to hear. There was no, at that time, Muslim and non-Muslim. We were all Allah's servants. And we were all believers. Allah said, am I not your Lord? What he said in Holy Quran. We answered, yes, you are. That voice, that signals that you heard and you answered that, yes, you are our Lord. You think the one who heard that signal, he was honored. He was honored to be dressed with that manifestation. Do you think that beautiful manifestation that overtake us by hearing that very beautiful sound and signal that today if someone is playing music a little bit, people begin, begin to be what? Drunk of the good one. They become, become drunk. They become so, so happy that they, they feel their goosebumps coming from drumming and from singing and doing this and doing it. Isn't that? When someone recites Qasidah praising Prophet ﷺ and some people drumming, you feel your goose, goosebumps. 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 <laughs> they are happy. What you think about you are hearing that in the day of promises. Do you think that when Allah dressed you with that beauty is going to dump you to have fire? <laughs> Whatever you have done, when you said in Allah's presence, you are my Lord, you are real Muhammad. Really you said, you reach Maqam Tawheed. In dunya, we are not reaching Maqam Tawheed. We speak about Tawheed. Every mosque is going to go and hear, oh, about Tawheed, 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 Tawheed. Books full of books about Tawheed. But it's an imitation of Tawheed. It's not the true Tawheed that we have, this, we have performed in Allah's presence as Allah mentioned in Holy Quran. It's not something that we are uh, trying to interpret. Interpret it. It is something that Allah said in Holy Quran. So that's why He said, the first level on the grave is a level of seven levels. The highest is Maqam al-Tawheed, is La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. He said, you will be able to reach al-Tawheed al-Haqiqi fi alam al-Nisa. The real Tawheed in the world of souls. When we were souls in Allah's presence, we brought the Tawheed, we, we uh, express the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His presence, in His, in His divine presence. How we cannot express that we were in that divine presence and in front, I cannot say front even because there is no direction. In, in that divine presence, we were able to pronounce Kalima to Tawheed. Our Prophet said, Man qala la ilaha illallah, dakhal al jannah. Whoever say la ilaha illallah, enter paradise. We said la ilaha illallah in the best place. This dunya is garbage, it's going to disappear. We said
said, La ilaha illallah. We are saying here, but the real one is there. Imitation and one here. Real one is there. From that real one, what we are saying here is a reflection of what we said there. Like a mirror. You look into the mirror, you see a reflection of yourself or reflection of many things else. Here when we say La ilaha illallah, is a reflection of what happens in reality in the divine presence. So everything that comes from us here to build <coughs> up back our real home, homeland. Our homeland is that day of promises. That is our homeland. That's what he wants to say. Prophets, he wants to say that humble autan min al iman, the love of homeland, is from faith. That homeland, that from faith, is the day of promises and the day of when we were souls in the presence of Allah. That's where we are going to go back. That's where we have to build it back up in order to reach that level. So Islam came. What Jesus came with, what Moses came with. What Islam came with, what Prophet ﷺ came with, is to take us back to the reality of Iman, to the reality of Tawheed, to take us back to that homeland where we are missing it. Awliyaullah, why they go into, into a state of trance? Trance? Because their heart understand the reality that they are they want to go back to their homeland this is not their homeland a grave is not their homeland it's the first level for their homeland it's like you move from one place to another in grave until you reach really the homeland there are people who when they die immediately they reach their homeland they have vehicles they prepare in their lives vehicles for that so what we need to, to do for reaching our homeland back in the day of promises in the presence of Allah is to have vehicles. And these vehicles are the good manners, good behaviors and good manners. And he said, the first thing that you have to keep is al-ilm al-nafi, the real knowledge, the beneficial knowledge. There are many knowledges, but are all of them beneficial? Or some of them beneficial, some of them not beneficial? Whatever it is beneficial, and you think that knowledge is beneficial according to, me, to your mind, he is not giving you more burden and say to you, this one is beneficial, that one is not beneficial. What you think is beneficial, follow. What you think is not beneficial, leave. And in our lives, every one of us one time and I will end with that story. We'll continue that next time, inshallah, because mother is approaching. One time, a uh, Sheikh Nazim Sheikh, our Sheikh Sheikh, Grand Sheikh, Sheikh Abdullah Faiz Dagstan, is living in Damascus in a mountain, high, high above, above the grave of Muhyiddin ibn Arabi, above the mosque of Muhyiddin ibn Arabi, you walk 15 minutes walking up on the mountain, he is there. His house and now his mosque. And always in his meetings, he has scholars come to listen to him. Scholars, not normal people. Educated. And one time, some uh, there is uh, a, a barber 
بين محبين من عالم المقام في مصر You need to go visit that area, that place, Mishnah. You didn't go there? It's nice. Syria is. Dasham is very nice. You see Ahlul Bayt, you see family of Prophet, you see the uh, children of Prophet Sallallahu his daughters, say the Zainab's Makkah. It's very nice there. Say the Adam where, where uh, Habib killed Habib, and you can see the uh, In the cave, the uh, it dropping tears, red tears, coming water, red, crying, and when Kabir came, killed Abel. There are many audience there. In any case, a barber, a lady came to him and saying, I want to see someone called Sheikh Abdullah Dastan. She's British. He knew she was British. He took her and went to Grand Sheik, climbing the mountain, 15-20 minutes, they reached up, and all these scholars were sitting. And this, you know, it's a Western European lady. She doesn't know the Islamic, or to say, principle, or the etiquette. She came to Grand Sheik and kissed him from his cheeks here, and cheeks there, holding his hand, and sitting beside him, leg by leg. <laughs> <laughs> and she told him, I want you to teach me ilmun nafra, beneficial knowledge. All these scholars going crazy now. How this lady is coming and kissing the sheikh? Which sharia? Not accepted. Grand Sheikh didn't say anything. Because it's, you have to be diplomatic, you have to have wisdom, you have to be patient. And someone there asked him, in the meantime, that they call Hajjah's father, Hajjah Nadia's father, Sheikh Nazim, to translate. So one asked her, How you knew about? The sheikh, she is coming from England. She, I will make this story very short. She said, I used to receive letters from an Indian lady in Bombay. But I didn't have any address. Only I receive a letter every month saying, in the letter, she was describing me the ilmul the, nafi, the, the beneficial knowledge, like one page, two page summary. And she tells her, I am receiving these from my master. He comes and visits me every day. So that lady in England, she doesn't know how this lady in Bombay knows, knew her address. She was receiving letter after letter every month for two years. And the last letter that she received after two years, Has, the, has her address at the, at the end. She was very happy because now she has an address. She knew from where, where to go. She took a plane all the way to, to Bombay, to England. She asked about that lady, they told her she died. But there is her daughter. So she went to visit her, I'm cutting it short. She went visiting her daughter and she found that that, she, that uh, the, the, her mother died and the daughter told her, yeah, there was a, a someone, a chef, used to come every week, give her a lesson and go. She said, who is that chef? She said, I don't know. But I have his picture and behind his picture he has an address. So then they gave her the picture, and there was the address of Damascus, and it was the picture of Branch. Two years. He's going and coming. Every week going and coming. So they were looking at her in the this school and say that she has never left here. <laughs> Two years is here. What you are speaking? So this is what I'm telling you. He is coming.
coming to see that lady in Bombay every week, give her a lesson about beneficial knowledge, what Gnosticism means, Ma'rifatullah, and going back to Syria and her father translated. And that lady, she said to him, Oh my Sheikh, I want you to teach me what you taught that lady to become Muslim. And this is the first time she knew it. She has the picture, she has the address, she has the, the letter. She has all documents. And here we have to explain that, but, that Allah can move in space by saying Bismillah Rahman Rahim, they can move from one place to another. He used to go to visit and come back in the same day. Like today in aeroplanes, it takes you 10 hours, but Allah, they have special aeroplanes that take them one second. And this is the power of the heart and power of the soul and power of the mind. One day we'll explain that, how they can use the power of the mind, the power of the soul, the power of the heart. How they can use it and move their body. So, he told her, look, I have three things to you. And this will be enough for you. First, you have to accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and accept Sayyidina Muhammad as a messenger. Say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu an la Muhammad as a Second, you have to know the time of prayer, Fajr time, Zuhr time, Asr time, Maghrib time, Isha time, and make one sajda. Say, Ya Rabbi, you are my creator, I am making sajda for you. Third, before you sleep, you make istighfar and say, Ya Rabbi, I forgive everyone. These are three things that now I'm getting from heart of Prophet and I'm telling you, you don't need to do more than that. All these scholars weren't angry. So what is this? Well, she has to pray, she has to fast, she has to... She said, this is my duty. She's coming to see me, not to see you. <laughs> she took that and went. She stayed two, three days visiting the Lord. After six months, she came back and she said, yeah, oh my Sheikh, I need really to become this. Then he gave her the prayers, he gave her fasting, he gave her to make charity, to make hajj and make salam. So everything has to go slowly. This is Ilm al This is a real knowledge that has light with it. So when he gave her the third, three things at the beginning, he knew that her heart cannot take more. It cannot put the, the load of the truck on the load of the car. It's impossible. He has to put it slowly. When she was able to take the load of the car, then he will be able after six months to give her a load of a truck. Unfortunately, today our scholars cannot understand this system. And that's why Prophet ﷺ, when he came, and everyone knows in Holy Quran that he did not prohibit uh, uh, drinking for Slowly, you want to be drunk, okay, but don't pray when you are drunk. And slowly, slowly, he forgives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and bless us and make everyone happy. And uh, may Allah support us and cure every sick person. And make people always healthy, especially those who are faithful to you, Ya Rabbi and faithful to your Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad and faithful to, to each other and those people who are helping. May Allah forgive anyone who is sick or his family is sick. May Allah forgive them and cure them all. How are you, Dr.
ਕਰਦੇ ਹਨ 